Nathan Rouse. And I'm Tristan Worsey. And we're the Blastmasters. Today we're going to show you how to install a seismograph to monitor for regulatory purposes in soil. Hell yeah. You're about to be transported to a snow-covered paradise. So today I'm out in the field. I have an opportunity through my real job to set up a seismograph. So I want to videotape how to do it properly and then share that as part of uh, the course. So what we have as far as our tools, we have a, an ancient seismograph, uh, Nomis Minigraph 7000. This is the, the geophone that uh, plugs into it. So this is actually what records, or uh, you, you measure the ground vibration using this sensor. And we also have a microphone to go with it. We won't be using the microphone today, um, but that's pretty simple to set up. Along with the seismograph unit, I have a selection of tools here. Um, one is post hole diggers. So you want to get your hole, according to ISW standards, uh, over three times the height of the sensor. So that's about nine inches or so in the ground. Um, today you can see all the snow around us. So we want to dig the snow out of that way. We don't want snow in the hole. Um, we have a shovel for one to get the snow out of the way and two to help dig the hole. And then three, this is a handy tool you can get at Home Depot. It has a spade end for chomping through some frozen ground. And then it has a nice flat end on the other side that helps pack in the, the soil around the geophone when, uh, after you get the geophone into the ground. Uh, so we'll start out, we want a hole. And the hole we need to make about yay big. Um, obviously the geophone's about two inches by two inches or so, but the hole we want to be a little bigger than a post hole so that we have room for the cable to come out and room to work and compress the soil in around it. So we'll start out with uh, chomping through some ground. Now the key you wanna set everything, you're gonna reuse everything, so you wanna set it near the hole uh, obviously the grass, you don't want to be putting that in the hole around the geophone. You can put that on top to cover it up if it's a permanent station. So set the grass aside for use later. And then you want all the soil uh, nearby. And if you have a tarp or something to set it on, it's obviously better so you don't get it mixed with snow. Uh, we might have to dig a second hole to pull some extra dirt, clean dirt from. Um, but I'll go ahead and start, start digging. Okay, and this ground's actually, for as cold as it is, pretty soft, but what you can use this, this pointy end for is breaking up the soil, and it makes your life, life easier with the post hole diggers. Okay, so now we have a nice hole. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get your tamping end of your, your pole here and actually tamp down the loose soil on the bottom of the hole. Get a nice flat surface. So we've tamped this in. You can see we've got nice soil, so this should be a good, good setup. So we've tamped it in when we want it nice and level. Uh, the next step is to actually put the geophone into the hole. Okay, so first things first, the bottom of the geophone has uh, mounting holes for spikes. So, uh, you know, the best practice is to mount this in the hole with spikes and cover it up. So for this demonstration, I have only two spikes to work with. Typically you have three. It's a good idea to use a, an adjustable wrench to tighten these down. So we have two spikes in here. And then we just, you wanna make sure the arrow on the top 
points towards the blast. This is a longitudinal uh, or radial, depending on which term you use, direction. So you wanna make sure that points towards the blast. It's level, so the vertical component is straight up and down, and then transverse is across. So our blast direction is that way. So at this point, you can actually use the flat end of the tool to push down on it, but since the soil is so soft, you should just be able to push it down without it. And you don't want to wiggle it around because it will um, loosen up, the, the spikes it will loosen up the hole so it won't have good contact. So I'm pretty much on the bottom. I'll just use Use this tool to make sure it's seated well. Okay. So the next step is to make sure this is level. Yeah, my hole's not big enough. This is why you do a big hole. I've widened out the hole so we can fit the level in. And if you can see, so here, pretty level. And then this direction, it's hard to tell there. It's a little unlevel. So we just have to push down on the front of it a little bit. Yeah, we're right there. Okay, so we're good to go. Now at this point, you definitely want to take your level out of the hole. Okay, so we're, we got the geophone in the hole. Uh, it's pointed towards the blast. So now all we have to do is fill the hole back in. Um, and this, this part's key. Uh, in our case, we want to make sure there's no snow. We want to use soil. So if there's any, any pebbles or rocks, take those out. You can use them on the top part. But around the geophone and above it, just above it, you want to make sure it's good compacted soil. So the way to do that is in lifts. Use our handy dandy, um, uh, the flat part of our pole here, and basically every inch or so, build up the soil and then tap it in. Tamp it down. So I'm taking, this is good soil. There's no, no grass in it, no organic material, um, no, no pebbles or anything. And you want to get it around all the hole. You don't want anything loose. You don't want the geophone shaking loose. Okay, there's a, a nice rock we don't want to include. Okay, so we got about level with the top. And we'll start, start tamping around it here. And you want to start gently so you don't... Um, Dislodge the the geophone. Make sure your cable's out of the way. Uh, that serves two purposes: one, you don't tamp the cable, and two, you don't dig it up with a shovel. Uh, cut it. And if the spot's too small, you can get in there and, and compress it with your fingers. Okay. Now that we got the geophone covered, we can start doing a little thicker lifts, moving a little quicker. So at this point, if you have bigger stones, you can put them in at the side, you know, keep them out of the way.
Okay, then we can start putting the grass on top. Less of a concern for a temporary location. More of a concern for a permanent station. You know, with the snow, if you had a tarp or something, you wouldn't have all this extra soil out. But for this demonstration, it's okay. Let's go ahead and finish camping her down. And actually just use your boot at this point. It's buried deep enough, it's okay that we don't quite have it flush to the ground. Um, so that's pretty much it for getting the geophone. Uh, the one point I mentioned before is the geophone location. You want it within 10 feet of the residential structure that you're monitoring at. Since we can't get on the nearby property, we're at the closest point on the quarry side of the property. So as long as we're shorter, um, shorter distance than the residential structure, then we're okay. Um, so on these old units, the new ones are pretty much the same. You might have a USB port. You have a sound port, a seismic port, and external power. Um, this is also a download port. So the new ones have a bit more to it. Uh, you might have a USB port, a different type of charging port, um, but it's all pretty much pretty, pretty similar. And these old units still work. You want to make sure they get calibrated once a year. So the controls are pretty simple. To turn it on, you actually plug in the geophone or the microphone. So we'll plug in the geophone, make sure it's clean. Plug it in, screw it down. Okay, uh, it'll come up. I don't know if this is viewable, but it'll say something about the last calibration date. Then it'll let you select what you're recording. I'm gonna do wave shape. You can also do a bar graph, which every a uh, certain time frame, like every 10 minutes, all it does is plot the highest vibration it records. You might use that for like uh, pile driving or um, if there's a, a hydraulic pecker that you have to monitor for. For blasting though, you wanna do the vibrations, um, the waveform. Uh, the new ones have a combo mode where it can do both. So the first screen that comes up gives the battery. You wanna make sure that's over about six volts. So this one's 6.6, .6, so it's good. The baud rate is 9600. That's an old thing with data download speeds. So really, um, you just make sure that matches the software on the computer when you plug it in. Um, the next, it asks what uh, units Air Blast is in, which is decibels here. And then there's some other information, clock and date. So uh, if that's all okay, you hit enter to move to the next screen. If you wanna change something, you hold shift and plus on this one. The new units are a lot easier to navigate. So we'll do enter. Now here it's given us the max range for inches per second, for the ground vibration and for the decibels. And we can change the inch per second to millimeters here if we want to. Then there's a seismic trigger. So to, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna adjust the maximum cause we're close to the shot. Hold shift and plus plus. So it, this unit can only do two and a half inch per second and five inch per second max readings. So I'll move it to five inch per second just to be safe. Um, shift enter goes to decibels. I'm gonna leave that the same because we're not doing air blast. The seismic trigger is 0.08. Um, typically, if it's if it's just a one-time use, the lower the better so you don't miss the reading. I'll make that 0.04, just hit the minus sign. Okay, 0.04. And now you can just hit enter. This last one gives the sample rate and the record time. So this unit can only do 1,024 samples a second or 512. I'm gonna keep it on 1,024. Um, for the duration, five seconds is probably okay, but I'm, I'm gonna make it six just to be safe. We're shooting a production blast and a signature hole at one second um, delay behind the production blast. So we wanna make sure we record both of those waveforms. Then hit enter and it's good to go. It shows a summary page. So this has 61 recordings on it. And you could actually scroll through these and look at each each of the peaks, but you can only get the waveform off the computer. So the last thing I'm gonna do uh, to finish the setup is just trigger it to make sure it records, and then you're good to go. Stomp on it. So it says data storage in progress. Do not turn off the power. So it's currently recording my stompage. And now I'm gonna close the screen, set it down, and we'll go shoot the shot, let it rip, and then come back and get the unit and download the data. And that's it.